Now on to our first guest, who uh, I got to see him play in person last year in the Texas Class 4A Division II Championship game. And uh, in that game, Jonathan Gray of Alito High School ran for 325 yards and eight touchdowns. It's by far the single best game I've ever seen in person. And I've watched about 800 games in person over the course of my sports career, more on TV, but it was an incredible performance. And earlier this year, Jonathan, who's now a senior, became the state's all-time touchdown maker with uh, 165. He's only the third high school player to ever top 1,000 points in a career. I could go on and on about these records and what could fall before the end of the year, but it's time to bring Jonathan in to talk about this incredible career. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Hey, hey thanks for having me. Uh, it's absolutely, and, and I meant that uh, at the beginning there. It, it was one of the greatest performances ever that I saw in the championship game, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I, I'm not even sure where to start with the numbers, but, but let's start with this question. You know, what goes through your mind when you think about uh, what you've been able to accomplish to this point in, in three and a half years? Uh, well, what goes on through my mind is just a blessing from God. I mean, you know, He put He put me on this earth to do some amazing things. So, and then I just give thanks to my parents and my teammates. I mean, without them, I, I wouldn't be nothing. Well, let's uh, take the listeners back to September when you broke the uh, state's all-time touchdown mark. What was that uh, like for you? Uh, again, you've broken a lot of records, but where does that one stack up in in the list of accomplishments so far? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling to have, and you know, with the team that I play with and the group, great group of guys that we have in the uh, program. I mean, it's just you want to play for those type of people, and we just work hard and work hard at everything we do and try to get things accomplished. And of course, you know, you can't do it without uh, your fellow linemen there. So tell me a little bit about away from the field. You guys are breaking records, getting talked to by the media, all, all, media all the time. You know, what do you guys talk about when you're just hanging out and not uh, on the practice field or on the game field? Uh, you know, we just talk about life and what, what we're going to do outside uh, when we graduate. And, you know, we go fishing and swimming and things of that nature. And, you know, we just sit around and have fun and just talk about life and, just things we want to do to uh, be successful in life. Now, you've started since you were a freshman. Uh, how many of those guys up front have been there with you for all uh, all four years? Any of them? Um, no, they all came in as sophomores. And from there, they just hit the ground running, and they work hard at practice every day. And, you know, do a great job of blocking sure. for me. And, and because, uh, you know, this is a national audience we're talking to here, let's let's give the guys a, a shout-out by name. So so take us from uh, left to right. Who are those guys opening those big holes? Oh, well, our left tackle is uh, Michael Wilson. He'll be playing at A&M. And then we have a rotation with A.J. and um, – AJ Ray and Casey Fowler and as um or as left guard and then our center is uh Jace Christian and then our right guard switches out with like I said with Casey and uh AJ and then our right tackle is Lakeman Johnson Guys have done a wonderful job. Now, before we get to this year, let's let's kind of go back to that championship game that I saw at Cowboy Stadium, along with you know twenty seven thousand other fans. Eight touchdowns gave you fifty nine for a season, another record. What do you remember about that legendary game? Oh, what I remember most about it is you know before the game we all sat down and prayed, and you know we took it to heart because you know going back winning two state championships is hard to do, and. Before that game, we just sat around and, you know, talked about how big this game is and what it means for this program. So, I mean, to have a game like that, I mean, it's just what you want. Yeah, and as you said, it's hard to win one. You got two and you're going for three now. Uh, A little rough start. You had two uh, losses in the first three or five and two right now. What are you guys talking about what you have to do right between now and the end of the regular season to get ready for that postseason run again? Well, after those two losses, we sat back and watched film on what we did wrong and what and things we could have done to improve. And, you know, blocking was one of them and tackling. So, you know, to get better, you have to get better at those things. And we work hard now at practice, and we're going a lot more best on best. And, you know, just getting getting our block um, techniques down and getting the tackle techniques down. So, I mean, we're moving pretty good along right now. 
Now, uh, kind of sit back here a second. I want to explain to the listeners some of these numbers, and I know it probably gets embarrassing to always hear them, but at this point uh, in the year, uh, 1,880 yards on just 130 carries. That averages out to 14.5 yards a carry. That's incredible. Uh, you're, you're, you're third on the Texas all-time yardage list. You're uh, 1,415 out of the second place part of the uh, record book, and then uh, you're, you're, you're 2,349 yards shy of the legendary Ken Hall, the Sugarland Express, who's America's all-time leading rusher with 11,232 yards from 50 to 1953. Now, obviously, you've got a shot at both of those records. A lot of things have to go right for you. You know, how important is it to challenge that mark at the top of, of Ken Hall? Oh, well, you know, like I tell everybody else, you know, a record is something it's, it's fun to have, and, you know, it's a thing that you can talk about and say, I have under my belt, but as of right now, you know, I'm not really thinking about a record and, you know, I'm just focusing on my team and trying to get these guys better and they're helping me to get better. So we're just, we're just trying to make each other better right now and just go out and win games. Now, one of the things this show tries to do is always point out all the positive things that are going on, whether it's with coaches or players. And I had the, uh, the pleasure earlier uh, this week to, to read a great story that was written by uh, one of the writers at Sports Illustrated, Ben Glicksman. Uh, and he tells a great story about you befriending uh, Leah Van. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. Young lady at your school battling leukemia. I guess she's now clean. And I guess my question is, as I read that, I, I hear you were there for a lot of her journey. So what did you learn about yourself as as, as you helped Leah through her health issues? Oh, well, I learned about, I mean, just a lot about just life. You know, we, we play, us as athletes, you know, we play a game of football and we think, you know, the, co- the coaches ask a lot of us and, you know, they're hard on us and we think it's just a hard life being an athlete, but you really take in perspective of when you see somebody that's having cancer and actually battling life or death, and, you know, just going through cancer and having that and you ne- and never know if you're going to live or die. So, I mean, that kind of touched me on my heart. And, you know, ever since then, I look back at life and, you know, cherish every moment I have because, you know, time is short. And, you know, it's just it's just overwhelming of seeing, you know, how, you know, athletes take the game and think it's life and actually send somebody to have to go through life or death situation. Yeah, is that the, the first time you've ever had to deal with anything like that, or have you had been touched by that in, when you're in your family? Um, as, as, as my family, yes, in the older age, you know, you know, with, uh, with my grandparents and, you know, my great-great-grandparents. So, I mean, just but having a student that's close to you and, go, and goes to your school and, Love to watch football and have to go through something like that. I mean, it just touches the heart. Absolutely. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, the media spotlight. Again, when a story like that gets picked up by Sports Illustrated and all that, yeah, everybody wants to know something about you, looking for the latest, greatest, what are you doing? Uh, how, how have you changed with uh, everybody wanting to talk to you? Um, you know, just you have to be humble and talking about yourself and, you know, telling everybody what they want to hear and, how they want to see you as, or what are you doing now? And you know, it's just I just tell everybody I'm just a laid back person, and you know I like to have fun outside of football, and you know just live a, a normal kid's life. Well, you 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 are very humble. It, it, it's coming through in this interview. Let's uh, let's talk about the big decision that you made. I know it's only a verbal at this point, but going the, right. to the University of Texas. Uh, what were some of the uh, the overriding factors there in choosing the Longhorns? Uh, just, I mean. Just a great facility and, you know, just with academics. Academics come first in my, in my household. And, you know, I, I looked at Texas as a, a academic school before uh, football. You know, I, I saw myself, I can see myself graduating from there and, you know, getting a great education and preferring my – on my phone. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's just it – just, um, you know, just seeing myself graduate there and, you know, just I can I can say that I'm proud to be a Longhorn. So, uh, obviously, everybody dreams of that, uh, the big college career and then the NFL, but uh, what, what else kind of floats your boat? You talked about education. What would you, what would you like to do when you grow up and uh, football ends? Um, you know, uh, business, I want to major in business and I want to be a CPA, you know, just manage my own money and be my own accountant. So, 
I mean, that's really what I want to do in life outside of football if football doesn't work out. So, you know, it's, it's great to have a backup plan. Yeah, well, you know, if you, if you get that backup plan all the way to the NFL, you need that CPA degree to keep your, uh, keep your money. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and and I, right. Re- I really appreciate you taking the time tonight. Uh, once again, we're talking with Jonathan Gray from Aledo High School in, in Texas, uh, the, the state's uh, leading scorer and a lot of other records. And let's wrap up with this question here. Uh, you know, when your high school career is through, obviously Texas is next, but when the career is through in high school, you know, how do you want to be remembered? I mean, by your coaches, your teammates, your fans, the – the rabid Texas high school fans who have watched you for four years, what would you like to, to hear them say about you? I just, I want to hear them say that Jonathan Gray was a great person, uh, just a humble person and a great athlete on top of that. So, and just, I mean, just a great guy to hang around. Well, Jonathan, uh, as I said, and I, I, I'm not saying this just because you're on the air here, uh, it, it really comes through your humbleness. Congratulations on what's been a great career so far. Best of luck with another shot at a championship, and, and, and best of luck with Texas next year. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very, very welcome.